When you think that things cannot get any crazier, they do. And in Israel, in time of war, that's a given. We've seen that day after day after day. And the state of national mental health has taken a beating. So today I want to talk about how Israel is coping with all the stress of this war. I didn't even watch the news or check the numbers, but there must have been 20,000 people out in the streets yesterday because of the news of uh, six hostages being killed in Gaza. They found them in a, in a tunnel. They recovered the bodies. They returned them to, to Israel. They made the, this made the news. And people went crazy because everybody wants this to stop because it's been too long. Israel has never been in a state of war for this long, and it's really taken a toll on every area of people's lives. Obviously, the economy is taking a beating. The, the, the type of money that's being spent right now on all the fronts and all the uh, ammunition and, and all the preparations and everything is crazy. There's personal finance. Uh, there's 300 people in the army that are doing reserve duty that are not working and not getting paid for their, uh, for their army service. There's 100,000 people evacuated from the north that haven't been home in, in almost a year. There's uh, a bunch that, are, that still haven't gone home from when they were evacuated from the south from October 7th attacks. The tourism industry has dropped to almost zero. It's picked up a little bit over the months. But there's so many businesses that rely on tourism that just can't keep afloat. Children in the south didn't go to school for months. The school year started again on the second day of school. We have this big general strike and it's, everything's closed down again. The state of mental health depends on stability. Lots of different factors, of course, but stability and lack of fear. And you have no stability in the country and there's plenty of fear that attacks will come, the war will continue, and so on. The organization I work with uh, partners with the Trauma Coalition in Israel. They're an agency that coordinates all the, the trauma counselors in the country they do workshops, they do training for the counselors. They have a list of people that family doctors relate to them. People that are waiting for somebody to see them, a trauma counselor that can, that can be freed up and take, their, take them on. The thing is, is before the, the start of this, this whole war, there weren't enough trauma counselors in the country. Now there's a whole avalanche of people with the emotional needs and um, that, that need trauma care. People that are affected on different scales, of course, there's families of the hostages and, and they're way up there. There's people that went through the, uh, the attacks, that experienced that they lost their houses. This is way up there. And there's also people that just, from everyday stress, children being afraid, they're just, they can't keep up. Soldiers are obviously way up there, but not even uh, foot soldiers that are out in combat zones. High-ranking officers, I mean, also out in combat zones, but that's not the reason that they're uh, stressed out. The reason they're stressed out is because they don't agree with the high command and they don't understand what, what's going on and they don't agree with the way that things are being handled. Everybody is on edge, everybody is stressed out, and there's an avalanche of, of people just trying to get some help. There's simply not enough counselors to take care of all these people. So they do workshops for bigger groups and like recorded workshops that they send out that people can participate in. There's people coming from uh, abroad. There's a, a university in the States that, that just sent down a, a group of counselors that they trained in Ukraine because of all their um, troubles there. And of course, they're almost, what, three years, two and a half years into the, their war, and they're going through the same thing. And, and their counselors already have uh, in the field knowledge and uh, expertise that they can relate to our counselors. There's a lot of Ukrainian refugees that left their war there to come here only to find war here. So they're fighting, they got double the stress because they're still thinking about their relatives and about their country there and they're, and they're in the middle of a war here. So the amount of mental health problems is, has skyrocketed and we're not even in post-trauma yet because this is an ongoing event and people relapse all the time. They can get better and then some news comes out and some event happens and they fall back again and there's more stress and it just doesn't stop and there's no end in sight. How do you manage stress like that? There's really no answer because everywhere you go is a dead end. If you start personally, then you can run into uh, national stress. 
uh, or you know group stress or some kind of uh, regional stress if you're from the north you have regional stress if you're from the south you have regional stress there if you're from the center you might not have as much but there may be something that happens right where you are there's terror attacks in the street so <laughs> that may happen in your neighborhood and that can set you off uh, to a very high stress level. If you were far away from the danger, from the war zone, from the rocket attacks, then you may have been good for, for months and you may have been living your life. But all of a sudden something happens and that stress that you, you have, you, you've been able to manage from the past suddenly comes out. There's no answer. I don't have an answer for this. I'm just relaying what's going on in the country. And I think the, the government is also... <laughs> It's got to be affected by this, and the army's got to be affected by this. I heard a, uh, um, an interview from a high-ranking commander that he was saying that it's very frustrating to, to see what the high command is doing because, according to him, he says they don't know how to win this war. Then you got all the propaganda and all the, the screaming voices out there calling names and, and, and uh, throwing around big terms. How do you get out of this? It's a rhetorical question, of course. I don't think anybody has an answer. You just kind of have to live through it. A lot of people are turning to God. And this nation has had its history with God and being cold and not being, not doing what they've been called to. I think this is a, another time like this. When there is no other choice and nothing that you can do, people turn to God finally. It would have been a lot easier to see God before any of this happened, but... Better late than never, right? Take away, I'm sure there's problems in your life, I'm sure you can handle them, but it's always better to do that with prayer because God has ways to fix the situations a lot better than you can. In Israel today, we need more of God. We need God to intervene in all of these situations. We need God's wisdom, and that's what we're praying for. And that's our story for today. Come back tomorrow, I'll tell you another one.